The final entry in the original run of Ring films was released in January 2000, following the one-year release cycle established in 1998 and 1999. This time around, the fourth film in the series found a selection of new elements. A new director, a new source material, and a new setting. With Ring Zero, Birthday, audiences were introduced to Norio Tsuruta, who throughout the 1990s had worked on several other horror projects. Tsuruta, you may remember, was the original pick for director on 1998's Ring, before being replaced by Hideo Nakata. For Ring Zero, Tsuruta was working with a screenplay by Hiroshi Takahashi, who also penned Ring and Ring 2, though notably not Spiral. Takahashi based his script off of a short story titled Lemonheart, from a 1999 collection by Koji Suzuki known as Birthday. This was Suzuki's fourth entry into his Ring universe, and the first to follow the initial trilogy. The object of Birthday was to deepen and expand the world building and the lore surrounding Sadako and her curse. Ring Zero takes this idea and runs with it, taking place before the first film and seeking to better explain the last days of Sadako's life. Thirty years prior to the events of Ring, we find Sadako as an understudy in an acting troupe. Not long after joining, Sadako falls foul of Aiko, her senior who has an in with the director, yet who is quickly replaced. Before long, Aiko dies, raising suspicion about Sadako's appearance. Shortly after, an apparition of a girl in white begins to materialize around the theater. Other members of the crew begin to love or hate Sadako, while the rest of the cast begins to hate her a bit more directly. Soon after enters Akiko Miyagi, a reporter whose fiancé died at an ESP event held to publicize the powers of Sadako's mother, Shizuko Yamamura. Miyagi tracks Sadako down and begins to photograph her in the theater. As it turns out, these photos show apparitions. As the film draws on, Sadako begins a fling with Hiroshi Toyama, the sound guy of the troupe. Through this relationship, we come to learn that Sadako can heal people, and not just kill them as we may have been led to believe previously. Due to the mounting paranormal events and deaths within the group, Sadako becomes something of a scapegoat for anything that goes wrong. In the end, the troop kills Sadako, at which point she and her evil half join into one single being and kill the entire troop. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. Sadako's father has kept her evil half locked up for years now, and she's more or less the source for all the ill will swirling around the troop. The film ends with Sadako resurrected following this death. Her father, Dr. Ikuma, gives her blunt force trauma and shoves her into the well, kickstarting the whole rest of the franchise. Ring Zero isn't as interested here in providing a new perspective on things as did Spiral and Ring 2. Effectively, if we've seen a single other movie in the series before this, we all know where this is going to lead. In reality, we probably didn't need this film. Yet, Ring Zero is notable for turning its unnecessary nature into an asset rather than a detriment. This ends up ironically being one of the best films in the original tetralogy. It's more or less self-contained and doesn't really require any of the context of the other films, given its place in the timeline. It can help bolster one's understanding of Sadako's origins and motivations when going back and watching Ring, Spiral, and Ring 2. But if you were to come at this in chronological order, you'd not be at all lost with Ring Zero. The most notable aspect about Ring Zero having this self-contained nature is the manner in which it controls its atmosphere of suspense. Looking back over the entire series up to now, we've argued that each entry possessed its own aesthetic and style. Ring can be described as claustrophobic, given its enclosed settings. Spiral is known for portraying a brand of bizarre, existential horror that dips more into science fiction than horror. That dips more into science fiction, in all honesty. Ring Zero is more agoraphobic than anything, with wide open spaces and a sense that there's nowhere for our protagonists to hide. Ring Zero, on the other hand, stands in a unique place where you know Sadako will die and how she'll perish, but there's a pervasive sense of suspense in not knowing how, in not knowing how she'll get to the point of her death. For more than a decade after the release of Ring Zero, the Ring series laid dormant at least in Japanese cinema. Shortly after Ring Zero's release, a Korean take on the first film hit theaters, and a Japanese TV series based on Spiral was broadcast. 
Several years later, the American remake of Ring came out, soon to be followed by The Ring 2. Ring Fever petered out for a time, but in the 2010s, more sequels in both Japanese timelines arrived, plus a crossover film with the Juon universe, as well as a collection of Chinese takes on the idea. All of those, however, are stories for other days. As for the original run of films, they never really seemed to get their due outside of Japan. The first gained international attention, but the others were largely ignored as inferior derivatives which were dumped onto DVD without ceremony. In truth, the initial Ring Tetralogy is a mixed bag of unique projects, which all deserve their own time and attention, especially by those who are fans of horror, and more specifically, Japanese horror. They were formative films which landed, made a splash, and ran with it until they ran out of steam. For a time. Let us know below which out of these four is your favorite and why. And we're sure there will be a number of different opinions here. And stay tuned here on Cinema Nippon. We might be done with Ring for this year, but we'll no doubt return to the franchise in the future. As for the rest of this month, there's still plenty to come.